Hello and welcome. Okay, this is the second video for today. I'm not going to keep doing this. This is just because it's Heresy Thursday and it's back to normal Heresy, which is what I like. I kind of fell out with Legion of Six Imperialis when Armored Clash was announced. I'm a, better, a bigger fan of War Cradle than I am Games Workshop at this moment. I just like the setting more. But it is Heresy Thursday and it is back to the normal scale of Horus Heresy. You know, good stuff. Um, so, to, well, what have we been announced? It's a new book. But uh, battle for Beta Garmin or Better Garmin, whichever you want. If Imperials won, it would have been a Better Garmin. And so, I'll read it through, stop at each section, and then like tell you my thoughts, and then continue. So, Shattered Legions and Black Shield star in the next expansion for Warhammer: The Horus Heresy. It's hard to believe that any campaign from the Age of Darkness can come close to the savagery of the Siege of Terror. But if there is one, it's the Battle for Beta Garmin. This strategically vital cluster swapped between loyalist and traitor hands several times with its vicious battle earning ominous sophocles like the soul plague, the reign of plasma, the great slaughter and the infamous titan death. Doesn't it just make you want to pitch in yourself? Well now you can, in the next campaign book for Warhammer the Horus Heresy. Okay that's just basically just kind of description and you know a bit of salesman technique there. Don't you want to join in? This is going to be so much fun. It probably will be fun but let's continue. Oh, there's the book. It looks pretty good. It's got Horus on the front. Anyway, following the pattern of the classic black books, the Siege of uh, uh, the Siege of Catonia, I should say. I'm actually reading it, but for some reason my brain went terror. The battle for Beta Garmin is loaded with background lore from the first embers to the raging fires of its conclusion. Sanguinius and Jakadai Khan are deployed to hold back the advance of the Warmaster Horus, and the forces from across the breadth of the Imperium are pitched into a battle that will leave billions upon funeral pyres. Along with its extensive story section, this campaign book will includes a wide variety of expanded rules of content for all kinds of heresy, heresy players. Now I don't like that last bit, I always see it a little bit um, misleading because it, I mean, unless you play as the actual legions involved or you know, the Imperial Army, because you've got the, for people there are, you've got Knights, Titan Legions, Mechanicum, which has this Katari Legions and Auto Reductor. The Imperial Army has the Solo Auxilia, obviously, because they just got plastic. And the Legions for the Loyalists were Blood Angels, White Scars, the Imperial Fists, and Salamanders. Again, you have Renegade Knights, Dark Mechanicum. And the Traitor Legions were Sons of Horus, Iron Warriors, Word Bearers, and Empress Children. So if you were doing anything but those, you're kind of going to be missing out on this one, such as the Custodes. Uh, Dark Angels, Thousand Sons, yeah, I mean they might have rules for them, but the main part of that was done by those uh, factions. Another lovely picture, uh, the new Onslaught campaign system pits teams of players against each other in an effort to force a decisive battle and claim ultimate victory. This quick fire string of connected games is a great way to play out our campaign over a weekend with a maximum of six games taking place before the final climactic confrontation decides it all. You can also theme your onslaught campaign after the events of the Garmin Cluster which adds additional campaign strategies for modifying your forces pre-game and task loyalist forces with selling their lives as dearly as possible for more time to reinforce terror. Tracked by the chillingly named Mortification Index, this gives loyalists a greater chance of seizing strategic advantage as their casualties mount. Okay, first things first, I like that top bit, the uh, about the Onslaught campaign system. It seems to be designed more for narrative players and non-tournament players. Uh, it's more for, you know, people who play for fun and want to tell a story or just have a good game using this as a basis for your games and not so much for the tournaments or meta players who you know want to make a game and build their army this is definitely designed for the mass player base rather than it this is what it sounds like to me okay it might not be i haven't read it because obviously it's not out yet but it does seem to feel that way and i think that's a far better way to do it because you're going to appeal to more people if you're designing a game to tell a story especially a narrative game such as the horace heresy it's far better and you know you can it looks like you can actually um let's say level up your armies you know advance them via your story which is great i like that as well uh very interesting uh sounds pretty good so far you know there's horace and so the next week beyond the campaign itself the shattered legions and black shields return as playable factions 
formed from the survivors of a drop site massacre and other disastrous battles. The Shattered Legions forces are ad hoc armies composed of troops from many different legions, Salamanders, Raven Guard, Iron Hands, and more mixing together within individual squads. This diversity makes for an extremely flexible and characterful rule set with a wide variety of special abilities depending on the predominant factions within each unit. Advanced players can use these rules to customize their army to an unparalleled degree. While these those looking for a rich narrative experience can embrace the confusion of the early heresy by throwing caution to the wind and mixing legions together at random. Okay, I like that because it means, well, I like the idea of Shattered Legions and the Black Shield. Well, Shattered Legions first, because it means you have a lot more diversity in your army and you don't have to just paint them one paint scheme. You, know, you can paint them all the colours of a rainbow if you wish, well, the legions of course, and it's really fun. I like that idea because it... I like having a diverse looking army and I don't, you know, though this is one that I, this is what kind of why I like, don't like horde armies. I like having a nice range of models and range of looks. It's one of the biggest reasons I've always collected Aldar because of that just variety of colour and models. So this is a, I like this. I like the idea of Shattered Legions. I've been doing Thousand Suns lately and honestly this would definitely make me do a Shattered Legions army as well. I think this really does sound good to me. I like this a lot. By contrast, the Black Shields have more cohesive structure that can be used to represent the many independent warbands that prowl the galaxy, be they fugitive from a legion that they reject, or displaced space marines collecting around a charismatic leader. These armies can be customised by selecting two oaths, which can set a distinct framework around which warband built, granting additional war gear options or abilities. Now this is less about having a different colour scheme for each one, but more about actually using different bits from each faction to make your army but you would have like the same color scheme throughout again it's a nice good idea i like the idea to have you know this flexibility on how your models look i think that's quite cool and you know you actually have a dedicated rule set for them as well i do like the idea of black shields and shattered legions they sound cool they always have been kind of cool and yeah it's i think it's pretty cool i like that i think that's good and i'm glad to see them actually in the game now I know a lot of people have been complaining that you can't use them. So, yeah. So, everything's looking really, really good. Now we have some new characters. So, there's still more. Legendary heroes from a campaign get all new rules, such as Little Hoss Axamond, Sons of Horus, Tybalt Mar, Sons of Horus, Shadrach Medusin, Iron Hands. That's good. Iron Hands getting something. I'll get back to that in a minute. And Endred Ha. A real treat for those who follow the events of Better Garmin through the Black Library series. Then there are rules for the Athian Heavy Sentinel, revealed at the recent online preview, along with more treats for this solo auxilia. There is a star next to this one and it says, more on those later. So that's coming soon in another Piracy Thursday. The epic campaign book is designed very much to be a companion piece to a first supplement to Legion's Imperialis, The Great Slaughter. And that says two stars, and that says the Great Slaughter will also be out later this year. Which concentrate on a huge sweeping battles of a campaign, while this one focuses on the more character driven narrative encounters. And the Sons of Horus and the Blood Angels, as major players, the army sets can really make for your forces stand out. It will be released later, with the plenty of plastic solo auxiliary releases on the way. It's a great time to be planning a narrative Horus Heresy campaign. Right, straight up to the start of the name characters two new Sons of Horus characters. Oh, well, not new ones, but, you know, coming back. And so, which means Sons of Horus can get more characters. Great, that's what we've wanted, because they don't have enough already. But Iron Hand's getting a new character. That's really cool. Getting Hopefully he'll get a new model. Wait, does he have a model already? I don't know. Well, Shadrach Medusa getting rules, which means he will get a model or has a model. So actually getting something for the Iron Hands is brilliant, because they are very much lacking in that. And Endred Ha being a, you know, black shield, Get hope getting a new model as well, fantastic. So basically, it looks like they are they might actually end up not supporting Imperial Fists as much and you know, giving other people, other legions a chance, which I like, I think that's great. And it looks like it's based around the actual novels, which is pretty cool as well because there is plenty of novels for this. There is, I was just looking this up, sources for this are uh, you have let's just look at novels Slave to Darkness, Titan Death. Uh, there's two of them, uh, and they also got Weirgeld, which is a novella, and Wolfsbane, the novella. So yeah, so you got quite a bit there, which is kind of cool. Actually, using the books as sources and not pulling out a campaign out your ass. Yeah, I like it very much. 
Now the next bit is kind of more worrisome in a kind of weird way. Linking it to Legionis Imperialis and like, okay, I like that idea. I think that's a great idea. I do enjoy these sort of campaigns where you can move from one scale to the next. I think they're always fun to do because you can sort of fix it onto one place where sort of battle happened during your epic game. And then, you know, say now, blah, blah, blah. Like these ones died, these didn't, these are these forces you've got left. I do like that as using it as companion companion piece. But my worry is how much does the does it actually depend on each other? Do you actually need the other one? I mean, Games Workshop has a bad habit of making you need a book to play a game. And so is there going to be missions which are dependent on Legion of Paris? I'm not going to say they are going to do it. But I can kind of see them not them actually doing it as well because we haven't heard much about Legion of Spear Alice for a long time. I mean, it's come out and it pretty much farted and died. I mean, I've not really seen it really anywhere. Uh, it's still pretty much on sale and for it didn't do the whole sellout thing, you know, like almost everything else does, including Horace Heresy stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Something about that just it gets my spider's tense tingling. You know? Oh, anyway, uh, I like the idea of it and I hope it works out and I hope they've managed to do it well. It's always a great idea. I do enjoy doing that. I have always have, I think, doing campaigns like that. And maybe if you can do a campaign, it shows you how to do a campaign using both uh, games, which I think would be fantastic. And so basically the last bit is basically about the classic solo auxilia which are coming out, which we know. And I will be talking about that later as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I actually, I'm quite excited for this book. It looks good. I like the lore. And yeah, I do think it might be a worth, I, I think I'll be picking this one up as well because I'm going to read it for the lore and get into that. Especially because I enjoyed Strategic Catonia. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of these books for Horace Heresy and, and as I've noticed now with the old world are really lacking in lore. And it does, I mean, it, we do need some more to read upon apart from just the novel series because those books are getting hard to get hold of as well now because they're not always in stock it's like there's not that many left actually on the Horace Heresy website anyway thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video again I'll see you all again soon links to Wailing Games down below if you wish to save money on your Warhammer as always there is uh, it's free delivery after £20 and it's up to 20% off there is also Forbidden Planet for your comics and your geeky stuff you know the stuff that's cool manga DVDs toys and finally, my merchandise, comics, t-shirts, etc, etc. Those two links are down below as well. I hope you all have a good day and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.